WNDS Sports and Plant State Megabucks present Candlepin Skins. It's bowling with a whole new twist as New England's best bowlers battle for cash prizes in every box. Candlepin Skins is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to the Londonderry Bowling Center here in Londonderry, New Hampshire. And thanks for joining us for another edition of Candlepin Skins. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. And uh, we begin another four-week sequence here, Dan. We, of course, carry over two bowlers from the week before. And uh, we have a brand new set of bowlers. And as it turns out, very unusual. But we have three of the same bowlers that have just qualified for the current singles tournament that's going on. Well, when you're hot, you're hot. I guess right. it just carries over, and you find that happening quite a bit. All right, let's uh, talk a little bit about the bowlers that will be on this show. We have Bob Kelly and Clarence Davis returning from last week. Bob Kelly will be on for his third consecutive week, Clarence Davis for his second. And now here are the new bowlers coming in in this sequence, this recent roll-off held at the B&L Bowl in Hillsboro, and we want to thank Ed Emerson and the gang there for taking care of all the details for us. And Tim Lipke came out on top in that roll-off with an even 700 and everybody else falling in line behind Tim. Tim will be on today's show, of course, along with Kevin Davis. The top two finishers come on first with the opportunity to win the most money in this sequence. Dennis Shute and Rico Baldinelli will join us next week. Two weeks from today, Bob Ferrara and Mark Belmare will be here as more of the familiar names come by. Mike Sargent and Bill Koffold will join us in the last week of this sequence. We've got uh, some pretty impressive names uh, in this group. That's right. In the last several weeks, uh, the bowlers have been real quiet with that microphone in the back. But today we got some we got some talkers. So I'm waiting for the trash talking to start. <laughs> All right. If you're not familiar with the rules here on Candlepin Skins, we will take a break and reacquaint you with those, and also get our match started here at the Londonderry Bowling Center right after these words. Don't go away. All right, before we get to the bowling, let's just review the rules here on Candlepin Skins. Bowlers compete individually, of course, one box at a time. We bowl two games during the hour. The high box in each box wins the skin. That's the dollar amount that's been assigned to each box. We'll explain that in a minute. Skins carry over if two or more of the bowlers tie for the high score in a box. And then, of course, the top two in total pinfall for the two games will return next week. So, as we always remind you, it's two competitions in one here. Total pinfall, regular candle pin bowling, and also the skins competition at the same time. Now, here's the dollar amounts for the various boxes. First three boxes in each game worth $10. Next three boxes worth $15. Boxes 7, 8, and 9 worth $25. And the tenth box in each game worth $50. That's how we do it here on candle pin skins. And last weekend, we promised that we would have a... Uh, an announcement this week as well, and we haven't forgotten. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Clarence Davis almost starting off with the home run. And Clarence and I were talking before the match, and he says, I gotta start a little quicker than I did last last uh, week. And as you know, he threw uh, some marks and laid in the strings to ensure his return. This week, he did just that, starting off with a spare. Clarence actually finished first a week ago by nine pins over this man, Bob Kelly who is uh, now, as we mentioned earlier, making his third consecutive appearance here on Candlepin Skins. Bob giving the field goal sign there after that ball. Splitting the uprights. And this tied wide left. <laughs> so a spare and an eight. This, of course, a $10 opening box. Kevin Davis now. Ooh. And he drops nine. Tim yes. Lipke. Leaves just the head pin, too. Oh, he got the strike. My, oh, my. Tim Lipke was already oh, out of oh, oh, He ties it. <laughs> but Timmy got a real one. <laughs> wow. Well, that strike for Kevin Davis happened well after we had switched over to Tim Lipke's ball. Yes, it really did go down. <laughs> in fact, I'm surprised, Dan, that Tim didn't stop. He was really almost right in his approach when that pin went down. So we have a carryover, right a most ahead. unusual carryover under the circumstances, the way it happened. I didn't think it was rolling hard enough. 
Nice. Oh, Kelly. Great start, shot for the spare for Bob. You might have heard Tim Lipke say a minute ago he didn't think it was rolling hard enough. He, of course, was waiting to see what was happening with Kevin's ball, but he thought he had waited long enough, and then all of a sudden, it went over. It was fast. So this second box worth $20 after the double strike carryover. is Bob Kelly's spare just clipping the wood. Watch the ball take the 10 pin and the wood take the four. Very nicely done. Tim Lipke working on a strike as is Kevin Davis. Ooh, half Worcester. Kevin's going to try it again. <laughs> Spare is on the board here, remember, for the skin here in the second. Tim plays it the conventional way, doesn't convert. Six on the strike. This for the carryover. Yes. Kevin Davis, spare on strike. We have another carryover, and that's how it works here on Candlepin Skins. Tim Lipke with an eight. And we move to the third box, and it will be worth $30. Carry over. Again, that column on the right side of the computer screen there will allow you to keep track of who wins the skins. Clarence Davis right back in the pocket. Oh my, Boy, just the four, five left piece of wood next to the five, but very difficult spare. Bob Kelly, likewise, unless he gets some help from the wood. Not too bad, Mike. Oh, Clarence. Oh. Oh. Wow, he Should've spun that four pin around, Clarence. but didn't knock it over. Wow. Well, for the first time, first two bowls will be opener. Both of them will be open, I should say. <laughs> and both with nines. Here's Clarence Davis's spare attempt. What an effort. He actually spun that pin around, but it didn't fall over. Kevin Davis working on a spare. And look out. Boy, Kevin could just as easily have had three strikes in a row. Oh, my. Well, he got a break with a five pin going, but now he's going to have a difficult piece of wood in front of the eight. Tim Lipke. Remember, it's just a nine right now to beat for the skin. Well, let's see. Tim Lipke has a spare opportunity here with the three, five, and 10. No. Nope. Oh. <laughs> well, this is a big pin for Kevin because Timmy's gonna have a difficult uh, making 10. That 10 box may be good enough. Kevin's got a big smile on his face as he comes back, and that's good enough for $30. So that 10 box, $30 for Kevin Davis. First skin of the day. Half Worcester right for Bob Kelly on lane 30. Clarence Davis, his first ball on lane 29. Right back oh, yeah. in the pocket, big strike. You know where the money is. <laughs> Clarence makes his bid for his first skin with a big strike. So he can only have it. That's the worst that could happen before he's going to win. Oh, nice 10. 10. Here's the strike for Clarence Davis. Brooklyn hit. Collapsed the 5 and 9 to take it out. Tim Lipke. Ooh, looking for the strike to have the skin, but it's all up to Kevin Davis. He's had the strike ball working, no, not that time. So it'll be Clarence Davis's skin for $15. Oh, good effort by Timmy on the spare. Ten for Tim. And a nine for Kevin Davis, who's in the overall lead in terms of pinfall here after four boxes, but 
still very close here early on, and of course Clarence Davis now working on a strike. This fifth box worth $15. Just touches the head pin. Leaves himself the two, four, and seven. Piece of wood in front, looks like a, a decent spare leave for Clarence. Bob Kelly moves the two pin off the spot. Spare for Clarence, spare on strike. And Bob Kelly can't convert. Might have cost him by sliding that two pin off the spot. So Clarence makes his bid for a second skin. It's gonna take a strike to win it or a spare to carry over. We're abbreviating Clarence, of course, uh, on our scoreboard. Kevin Davis. Kevin, same leave as Clarence Davis. Two, four, seven. Get up. Oh, what do you get over? Wow. Great, Hang on. great mix there for Tim Lipke. He's trying to pull for the seven. Yeah! yeah. 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 He's just waiting to see what would happen. Bear for Kevin. That takes us to a break. Tim Lipke wins the $15 skin in the fifth. And three of our bowlers have marks up when we return on Candlepin Skins. Well, Bob Kelly, the only guy not working on a mark as we go to the sixth frame of game one. And the only one without a skin so far. And it's going to be a difficult one here for the spare. Let's get the six, seven, eight and the piece of wood in between the six and the eight. Let's see. Oh, oh what's so shot. difficult about that, Dan? <laughs> great shot. He Come was back. making some great shots shot, in the warm-up before the show started as well. So. Clarence Davis goes out with a nine after just a four fill on his spare. Let's check Bob Kelly's spare here. Six pin in the wood. Slides over for the seven and eventually the eight. So he's trying to get on or into the uh, skins column. Tim, spare. Tim Lipke working on a strike here. Boy, he got away with one. Oh, he certainly did, and he's got a nice spare leave in the 6-10 with a piece of wood out front. Kevin Davis just three on his spare. The wood roll back against the six, which is even better for Tim. Should be no problem. There it is, to have the skin with Bob Kelly. And Kevin Davis almost matches it. Yeah. That'll be a nine, but the spares will create a carryover here in the sixth, so the seventh box will be worth $40. And as you see, very, very close. Kevin Davis still in the lead, but he may not be after Tim Lipke fills that mark. Clarence oh, Davis right in the pocket. No doubt about that one. That was buried in the 1-3 pocket, and it would just been a shame if anything stood up after that ball. Well, let's see what kind of a lead Bob will have. Not a good one. No. Six on his spare. With the three pin, the six, uh, three pin, the four, seven and ten. He's trying to bail, and he does beautifully with a nine. Here's Clarence Davis's ball. Watch this ball right dead in the 1-3 pocket. Picture perfect strike. That's the way it's supposed to happen all the time, I guess. Mm. If only. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin Davis temporarily in the pinfall lead here. And he'll shoot at the four horsemen left. Tim Lipke now working on a spare. Can have the skin with a strike and does not. So give it to Clarence Davis. That's a $40 skin for Clarence.
Ooh. Ooh. The spare just <laughs> Tim's third mark in a row. Kevin Davis takes a seven. So it is Tim Lipke in the overall lead right now, but it's still very, very close. Bob Kelly with two marks to his credit so far, both spares. Clarence almost a double strike, everything but the five. And the spare, beautiful shot. Bob Kelly again. Clarence slides by the five pin, just, just, well, a decent nine fill, but he did not get the spare. So Bob Kelly puts a spare up, still looking for his first skin. And another great shot. He's making some great spares, but people were, well, Timmy took the last one away from him. He's gonna take a strike. And... <laughs> Tim will be bidding for his fourth mark in a row. As he's taking the lead, Kevin Davis will have another look at the four horsemen. So they both have a shot here to have the skin. Already done, Tim Lipke right on target. He is catching fire here, four marks in a row. Kevin misfires. So this eighth box will carry over and the ninth will be worth $50. And it's a 10 for Kevin. No, Kevin Davis was in the lead not long ago, but after this box, he may be in fourth. <laughs> Bob Kelly must be thinking, I, I guess I'm gonna have to throw strikes to win a skin here. Every time he puts a mark up, the last couple times, Timmy has taken it away from him. Wait, something about the ball that Clarence Davis is throwing today, Dan, the ball is just exploding when it gets to the pins. Clarence doesn't throw the ball particularly hard. Pretty long, He's got the one, three, and ten. We gotta watch out for that front piece of wood. Nah. Just caused the ball to fly up and over the ten pin. Up Kelly is bid for another great spare, not this time. So for just the second time in the game, both Clarence and Bob will leave the stage open. With opens. <laughs> a ten for Clarence, a nine for Bob. Kevin Davis next. Kevin started out with a strike spare, and then he had a spare three in the fifth. But other than that, it's been uh, fairly quiet. Meanwhile, Tim Lipke, four marks in a row. Well, let's see. A 10 may be good enough here. Let's hold on. <laughs> Bob Kelly says somebody <laughs> get a 10. Well, let's see. Kevin may have a shot at one. Let's see what Tim does here on his spare attempt. Oh, my. I had half a feeling he was going to make that the way he's been going. There's the 10 for Kevin Davis to create the carryover. And a 10 also for Tim Lipke. So we will have a $100 10th box here in game one. A big box to finish this first game. Bob Kelly, again, is going to have to make another spare. The 2, 4, and 7. Piece of wood in between the 2, 4. But and likewise, let's see where this wood ends up for Clarence, though. He could sweep everything from right to left. Bob Kelly first? No. I'm sure Clarence is probably going to try this wood. Let's see if Looks good. Go. Yeah. Oh. Great shot. 10 for Bob. Clarence will stay up there to fill that mark, and let's have another look at it. On the sweep, the five, seven, and eight, just like that. Actually, he just caught the seven pin. Clarence's fill is seven. Leaving him with a 131, 113 for Bob Kelly, and as you see, Kevin and Tim Still to come to finish out. Of course, it'll take a spare to carry it over. 
or a strike to beat Clarence Davis for this $100 skin in the 10th. It'll be a $100 strike off one of these balls. Well, Timmy looked pretty good going in, a little heavy, but, well, um, possibility of a spare, delicate shot. Kevin Davis for the strike. Oh, my. Well, we got two <laughs> shots at the half here. It'll be Tim Lipke first. Oh, great effort. Oh. Great effort. Pressure shot by Kevin. And he's oh. on it. That creates the carryover, so we'll have $110 now in the first box of game two. 10 for Tim Lipke, 137. So Tim being open here in the 10th and Kevin getting a spare will just make things a little tighter. This is the beauty of the skins. That beginning of that second game is going to be a big skin for someone to win. Nine fill for Kevin and a 126, so he jumps back into third place overall after game one. Tim Lipke in the overall lead with Clarence Davis just six pins behind, then Kevin Davis and Bob Kelly. Second game to come, we'll have a big skin to start it when we return. Three of our four bowlers have uh, gotten on the board with Skins winnings. Clarence Davis leading the way with $55 and three Skins already. And leading off game two. One, three, and see the eight pin in the back. No. It had to be a little heavier on the head pin or split a little more so it came off the left sidewall for that eight pin, but he'll put up the 10 box and you never know. $110 here in this first box, remember, game two, after the carryovers from the end of game one. Bob Kelly, who sits in fourth place right now and to keep his string alive of consecutive weeks. He's going to have to pass two bowlers here at least in game two. Bob made three marks in the first game. Two of them spectacular spares but was not able to get any skins. And a half Worcester at first and now he's got the 6-10, 6-7 uh, left. A uh, 4-7. I get it right. <laughs> Wake up Dan. It's just two pins. <laughs> and, and there they go. So it's going to take a mark. Carryover has been created. And that's up to one of these final two bowlers, Kevin Davis or Tim Lipke, to throw a spare or a strike to win it. Kevin Davis won his only skin so far with a 10 box earlier. And there's oh. a big strike. And that may be worth $110 unless Tim Lipke can yeah. match it. And that's a little He's, trash yeah. talking going on here. <laughs> He's got that look. He's got that look. Kevin had a little something to say to Tim on the way by. Okay. <laughs> Tim looking for the strike, and he's been on the head pin most of the day. Don't be surprised. Uh, a little fall. Two full this time. That's a, a break. $110 for Kevin Davis. Are you going to steal it? <laughs> Biggest skin by far today. And Tim slips by the 6-9. Tim, of course, the pinfall leader coming into this game two, and he scores a 10. Also, remember the numbers at the bottom of the screen, the cumulative pinfall totals for both games. So you can keep track of uh, how the bowlers stand relative to each other in total pinfall. Remember, the top two will be back next week. Thanks. And they will be joined by Dennis Shute and Rico Baldinelli. Five, six, and ten for Clarence. Instead of the lynching, can we split it four ways? Twenty-seven, fifty. <laughs> well, we promised an announcement for today, didn't we, Dan? We did. Well, no, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> Forgotten already, have you? <laughs> Actually, it's uh, kind of two announcements, but we just want to uh, keep everybody informed as to what we have planned for the end of the season here on Saturdays at noon during this hour here on the Winds of New England as Bob Kelly turns away from that first shot. He did not like that ball. 
We'll be continuing our skins programs for the next uh, number of weeks. Oh, another great shot. Bob Kelly's made another one. Hasn't made a skin yet. Hasn't won a skin yet, but he's made some terrific shots. Here's this one again. I want you to throw a two in a row. He's made some fantastic spares. He's kept him in the total pinfall race. Kevin Davis on a strike. So we'll be having our regular skins competition uh, for the next eight weeks or so after today. And then mark these dates down on your calendar. Saturday, April 29th. Saturday, April 29th at 12 noon. We will take a break from skins competition for the next several weeks. And on the 29th of April, we will re-air that classic Paul Berger, Glenn Shattuck singles match that originally aired on Christmas Day. And I know a lot of people probably didn't get a chance to see it simply because it happened on the holiday. I'm sure they probably heard about it. <laughs> but uh, Paul Berger and Glenn Shattuck put on a whale of a show on Christmas Day, which of course was a Sunday when it originally was broadcast, but we're going to re-air it on Saturday, April 29th. That's spare, of course, for Tim Lipke having the skin, and we'll have now a $20 skin here in the third. As Clarence Davis steps up with a shot at a spare here. So, Saturday, April 29th, we'll re-air that Paul Berger, Glenn Shattuck match. Then, we've got some more surprises <laughs> in the weeks to follow. For the next four Saturdays, starting on Saturday, May 6th, we will broadcast the semis and finals of the 1995 New Hampshire State Candlepin Tournament. And we'll explain a little bit more about how that works as the weeks go by, but basically the tournament which goes on over a period of several weeks over March and April will be narrowed down to the last five bowlers in the all events competition for men and women. Two of those five will be eliminated in preliminary matches, and then the final three bowlers will compete here on television for the 1995 state championship. Another solid spare there for Bob Kelly. And he just can't buy a skin. He gets a mark, and somebody, this time again, Tim Lipke threw another spare and have the last one on Bob Kelly. This time he uh, has it with uh, Clarence Davis. So it's going to take a strike by Tim Lipke to steal this one outright. We'll be uh, reminding you about these changes to the program schedule or additions to the program <laughs> schedule here on the winds as the weeks uh, unfold. But we're very, very excited about uh, not only giving you a chance to revisit that Paul Berger, Glenn Shattuck show, but also uh, to present for the first time the finals of the New Hampshire All Events State Championship. Tim Lickie is bid for the strike and the skin. So it'll be a, another carryover. And I should mention that for the first time in the history of our bowling telecasts here on the winds of New England. Well, actually, for the second time, you did bowl against me. But That's right. for the first time in the history of our bowling programs, you might qualify <laughs> yeah, for the well, show. It's, uh, because it's you'll, be, you'll be eligible for that competition. Right, I will be bowling in that competition. However, See all these young guys here. It gets it gets tough. It gets tough. <laughs> now, how many games is that before you get to the top five? Uh, um, I knew you were going to ask that. I, I meant to ask before we started talking about it, and I forgot. I believe it's 21. I'm going to recount them. And that's six on Clarence's spare. Yeah, yeah the all events winner, they compete in a singles event, a doubles event, either men's doubles or women's doubles, a, a mixed team event, which is two men and two women and a team event, five person team. Wow. And uh, you keep your running total from each one of those events. They take what you hit in the singles, and what you hit in the doubles and the teams and so forth, and we get an overall winner or an overall champion which will be decided by taking the top five total pinfall winners and eliminating from there. So, and you'll see the, uh, the final three on, on the wins. So it should be exciting. 
Nine for Bob Kelly. Clarence Davis put up a 10, as you saw, so the stage is open for either Kevin Davis or Tim Lipke here. This is a carryover skin worth $35. But Kevin has been all over the head pin today. You know, it's funny, I was watching him warming up and he wasn't hitting the head pin at all. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, sometimes uh, the preliminaries, if they're bad, the real thing is better. And that's what the case with Kevin Davis. Spare up for Kevin. He's right now fighting Clarence and Tim Lipke for the uh, overall lead. Tim Lipke will increase his lead with this ball and the spare. My five, seven, eight, no wood. I'm gonna try to cut the five pin on the right hand side. Oh, oh boy. boy! You could tell as soon as Tim threw it, he knew he had a chance. Yeah, a little extra body English usually means the bowler says, "I'm gonna be close to this one if I don't make it." That's a uh, thirty-five dollar skin, by the way, for Kevin Davis for the uh, spare, the ten for Tim Lipke. And Kevin Davis is racking up the cash here. He's now at $175 in skins. He's taken almost all of the available cash so far. $15 skin now here in the fifth. Playing it inside? No. Well, Clarence can't afford too many open frames. Just too many people close in the overall pinfall. There's a great oh, finish. Oh boy, must have heard me. Great finish right there for a 10. So he's at 186, but uh, he's already bowled his fifth frame. Bob Kelly is at 165, yet to bowl the fifth. 170 in a ball for Kevin Davis and 193 for Tim Lipke. Bob Kelly looking for another mark. He's made some spectacular ones already. The one, three, eight, and ten. No. I think Bob thought he made it. Well, that puts him at 174, 12 pins behind Clarence Davis. But as you can see, Kevin and Tim will also be ahead of Bob. So. But still very close. A couple marks here or there, and it's going to swing around. Kevin Davis on a spare. Oh, no. my, my. Now, Clarence has already posted a 10 box, so. Ooh. And it's still there. <laughs> Tim Lipke just turned around and said, my turn. <laughs> the last couple of boxes, he's jumped up there early, I think. Trying to beat Kevin to the punch, but he gets that, uh, that anchor spot, which in a game of skins, I, I think it has a little bit of an advantage. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's, uh, I mean, uh, Clarence is saying, well, wait a minute here. That Ten bucks could be worth a few dollars to me. Oh, that's oh. a big shot right there. <laughs> to get those is. four is a big shot. Because now he has a chance to have the skin. And... Oh! oh it's a nine. And it will be a $15 skin for Clarence Davis. And we will go to a break with lots more still to come as we decide the total pinfall situation. Don't go away on Candlepin Skin. Back we are with five boxes to go here on Candlepin Skins and Clarence Davis. There's what he's done so far. He has one mark this final game. Back in the third box with a six fill, but he is, hasn't left the pin standing. So 
He's pinning well, but he needs some more marks to him. Clarence Davis from Exeter. He and his wife, uh, Teresa, have four children, Richard, Michelle, Debbie, and Danny. Clarence, uh, part owner of the Davis Tree Service. And he'll settle for an eight here in the sixth box, which is a $15 skin. Bob Kelly. It's funny, Bob has made some spectacular shots, but I don't think he's real happy with the way he's bowling. No, a lot of times you make spectacular shots usually means the first ball has been off target and you leave a weird spare leave, something you wouldn't if you were bowling very well and on the head pin. Bob takes the nine. And the other thing is he's low man, but he's still far from out of it. Yeah, that's true. Nobody's working on marks right now. Tim Lipke still has the overall lead. Kevin Davis, again on the top of the head pin. Big strike. Whew. He's making a statement right now. He's going to push Tim Lipke unless Timmy can get a mark for that overall lead. Quick one here for Kevin. Bang. Can Tim have it? No. Pulls it. So that's $15 more for Kevin Davis. He's up to $190 right now. Oh, oh, spare. And that's a critical spare, too, for Tim Lipke. That's a second uh, ball. Didn't win the skin, but he kept the mark up there for that overall pinfall. And nice you see the spare. Right now, Tim Lipke in the lead with 212, followed by Kevin Davis with 197. Both of them working on, on marks, spare and strike, respectively. And... Uh, then it's 183 for Bob Kelly, 194 for Clarence. Let's see if this will go. Almost. This seventh box worth $25. Clarence hangs in there for the 10, but 10s aren't going to be enough uh, from here on out, I don't think. See, Bob Kelly needs marks, too, here as we wind down to the final few. You see, he's not been able to get on the board with any skins yet, and that's, and that's he, why. Yeah, that was a decent ball in the 1-3 pocket, but leaves himself to 2, 5, and 10, and a piece of wood in between the 2 and the 5. Got to cut the 2 on the left-hand side. Nope. nope. Too much of the 2. So Bob will definitely have to mark out if he's going to... Get back in the total pinfall race. Double, double. Well, now Kevin Davis on a strike here. He's in a position to really secure one of those top two spots if you throw another mark here, especially a strike. Well, instead he'll have a split, the four, six, and seven. With wood, though. Either shoot at the seven pin or go at the six, way to the right. That's what he's going to try to do. Nope. Ah, good. Eight fill on the strike. And again, Tim Lipke's going to get up, needing just a mark <laughs> to win the skin. <laughs> Three tens up there. Tim's working on a spare. Let's see, Clarence Davis trails Kevin Davis by just 11 pins. More important than the skin, probably. Tim is just worried about the fill here. And he throws the big first ball. Not quite enough to take the strike, but certainly in a pretty good spot to take the skin. <laughs> Although he's got to watch out for the cap here. He really does. He'd love to get by the cap, just hit the pin. Uh oh. Oh, he got it. That's a $25 skin for Tim Lippy and a critical mark as well. Was it 10 pin when you need it? <laughs> no doubt. So the eighth box will now be worth $25. Tim Lipke solidifying his overall lead. And half Worcester left on Kevin, I mean uh, Clarence, I should say, and he needs marks. We should mention Clarence and Kevin Davis, no relation. Look out. Ooh. Well, with 
Clarence open. That really leaves the door open again for Kevin Davis. Oh, that's a nice 10. That was a second ball. That was a ball you wanted. Bob Kelly now. Bob needs marks right now. Yeah, he's going to have to have three marks here going out, I'm sure. Oof. <laughs> he has not thrown a strike today. Well, he came pretty close that time. I don't know what held the seven pin up. There it is for the spare. Keeps him alive. Even had the 10 pin if it was there. All of a sudden, it gives Kevin Davis something to think about. Look at what Kevin has done. <laughs> $190 already. Pulled that ball. One of the few times he's been off the head pin. This well, is not so terrible. No, though. the wood falling in between like that is going to keep the one and the three pin in play and do a lot of damage. Yeah, kept the three pin in play all right. It <laughs> <laughs> stood right there. Well, every pin's important. Well, Tim Lipke is in a position here to really secure one of those two spots. And the fight then is going to be between the other three bowlers. Oh, Tim grabs an extra one. Of course, he needs this, or Bob Kelly is on the verge of winning a skin. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> let's hold let's, our let's, breath for Bob. Let's, let's listen for Bob, too. <laughs> I don't think Bob believes it yet. <laughs> That's his first skin of the day, worth $25. In case you were wondering, nobody leaves here empty-handed. Even if they were to win no skins, they get a $50 uh, oh boy. qualification appearance. Not what Clarence wanted. The one, five, and nine. Spread Eagle plus the eight pin left. And really needs to make this. This ninth box, of course, worth $25 as well. Well, now we switch over to Bob Kelly. Important ball, ball for Bob. Working on a spare. Bob trying to catch either Kevin or Clarence for second place. Tim Lipke is out of reach, probably. Tim is pretty secure at this point. Just a six fill, but more importantly, not much to shoot at. No. Pulls him within 19 pins, but he really, really needs needed the mark there. He's gonna be in double strike situation, assuming Kevin doesn't have any marks in the ninth or the 10th. Nine for Bob. Boy, Kevin has had the half Worcester, or rather the four horsemen left a lot today. Well, he should make one of these then. He's had enough practice on him. <laughs> Whoop, not this one. Head pin. <laughs> Kevin just turned around and said, oh, I need this pin, don't I? That's right. We want to get a seven and a nine box up. Oh, oh he didn't get it. Oh, Tim has got to have a ten box. Wide <laughs> <laughs> open. Now, the, see, this is the ultimate pressure as far as I'm concerned. That's right. Never mind having to get a strike to win it. How about needing a ten box to win it? Of course, Tim can be comfortable about one thing, and that is that he's pretty safe for coming back next week. He's in a very good spot here right now. So we can be loose up there. There you go. He's got two shots at it. <laughs> I think the other bowls are trying to talk him into using the wood. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, he came very close to hitting that piece of wood in the channel. And that would have meant it would have been a nine box. I saw that wood in there. <laughs> Tim Lipke's had a big day. Well, 
Clarence's only hope now is to throw a strike. Not to be. So that eliminates Clarence. Next up would be Bob Kelly, also needing a strike, and then we'll talk. Boy, Clarence has just really struggled here. He had a 131 opening game, but hasn't been able to get anything done in this game. Oh, no, you're way ahead yet. Goes out with a 9, a 99, and a two-game total of 230 with $70 in skins. And now Bob Kelly needs a strike. No. Bob from Stoneham, Mass. He and his wife Marianne have a five-year-old son, Cameron. Bob works for the United States Postal Service. And he can't even buy a spare oh. in the 10th. Isn't that kind of a day. Yeah, this is, you know, your total pinfall is out of reach, but uh, there's a $50 skin here. That's right. Right at the end, so. <laughs> well, it's up for grabs again. Pair of nines up there. Kevin Davis. <laughs> Kevin just said, I got to get at least a 10. Well, it's going to be Kevin Davis and Tim Lipke advancing to next week. But we still have the matter of this $50 skin to decide. Oh, my. <laughs> Three nines. Come on, Doug. Let's put our bowling shoes on here. <laughs> All right, guys. How much? <laughs> <laughs> well, Tim can have a little fun here. He's already in for next week, and he's got a $50 skin on the line if he can get a 10. Same situation as last time. If he punches through the middle, you're going to hear these three bowlers. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> let's see now. <laughs> of course, Critic this situation would be entirely different if Tim needed something to qualify for next week, but he's already locked that up. So he can afford to have a smile on his face here. Oh, great oh. shot. Oh, that's worth fifty dollars. Right, Absolutely. <laughs> we'll give him the fifty. Sure, why not? He's just toying with him. Yeah, he'll stay up there to fill that spare. Great shot for Tim Lipke. One thirty-six plus a ball. He had a one thirty-seven opening game. And he punches through, but it's of little consequence now. A one forty-one and a two-game total of. 278 for Tim Lipke, who will advance to next week along with Kevin Davis. Tim Lipke takes that final skin worth $50, so he goes over the $100 mark in skins winnings. Kevin Davis, the big money winner of the day. We'll wrap it all up for you and tell you about next week here on Candlepin Skins when we come back. All right, welcome back to Londonderry Bowling Center. Doug Brown, Dan Murphy here as we wrap it up on Candlepin Skins. And here's the way those pinfall totals went as we will have two new guys carrying over to next week as Tim Lipke and Kevin Davis come out on the top of the list. Big day for Tim Lipke. He had 11 marks. And uh, Kevin Davis had a good day, too. He was, uh, it seemed like, either right on the head pin for uh, strikes or easy spares or else he left the four horsemen. But he was able to convert a lot of those into spares, 243. Clarence Davis takes third, Bob Kelly fourth, and here is the prize money situation, the skins money. Of course, Kevin Davis got most of his early on, including that big $110 carryover skin. Tim Lipke did a lot of damage late in that second game. Everybody got on the board, but uh, really it was pretty much dominated by, uh, by Tim and Kevin, especially at the end. That's right. They were one and two in the last roll off. Uh, they seemed to have the momentum coming in. Bob Kelly made some great spares early, but just couldn't put the streak together. And Clarence, uh, he started out all right, but uh, ran into some trouble that second game. Next week, of course, uh, Tim and Kevin will be back to try and make it two wins in a row, but helping to try and stop them will be the uh, third and fourth qualifiers from this latest roll off as Rico Baldinelli and Dennis Shute will be coming in. Oh, it should be a great foursome next week. All right. We'll hope that you'll join us next 
Saturday here on the Winds of New England at 12 noon for Candlepin Skins. Don't forget, tomorrow, of course, we will have uh, Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, and we'll have a brand new four week series starting there as we'll have our number five seed, Bob Ferrara, against our number four seed, Mark Belmare. We hope you'll join us tomorrow, and until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a great weekend, everybody.